G'day, I'm Tim Thompson and welcome to Midweek Review. This week I get to torture this. It's the EcoFlow 1600 Max and it's a lithium ion NCM battery pack with its own charge controller and all that sort of stuff. You can charge it from the wall, you can charge it from a generator, you can charge it from solar panels. You could probably rub your legs together in rayon pants and charge it. They tell me that this thing is a bit of a beast. In fact, it can power up to 3000 watt appliances. Let's get started by using this for a few jobs around the house that are quite mundane and normal and slowly ramp things up until we make it beg for mercy. Don't forget guys, hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up. Now let's get into the review. Okay, so what do you get? Well around this side we have our four outlets for 240 volt. That's impressive. We've also got a single 12 volt outlet in case you want to run a car fridge. A couple of DC outputs and you've got your charging inputs as well as your breaker which I'm hoping will activate later on. Around your other side you've got your LCD display and your plethora of millennial charging devices with your USB fast and slow, two of each, two USB-Cs and an off button in case things start getting hot. Finally, on the reverse side, there are two extra battery inputs, so if you're rich enough to buy a couple of these, you can join them together and really get serious. And of course, last but not least, there's the accessory pack. You get instructions, you get a 240 volt wall charger, solar panel leads, car charger, you can charge this while you're driving in the car, and a DC thing. And some lollies. They're not lollies, they're dangerous, don't eat them, it was a joke. So now I guess all we have to do is plug this thing in, wait 65 minutes, and it should be 80% charged. Okay, so the first challenge should be pretty simple for this, based on its stats, but let's see anyway. It's coffee time. Coffee machines take an awful lot of power, so let's see if this thing can cope with the coffee machine without tripping. Lights, camera, action. I don't know about you, but I love reviews that involve coffee. Thank you. Uh. So maybe that was a bit too easy. This handled it without a problem. Uh, let's keep the coffee machine on again. Include a kettle as well. Now both of these devices should pull about a thousand watts each. So we're talking about 2000 watts of pull. That should, according to its specs, be well within range. But stranger things have happened when I've reviewed products. So I'll turn on the coffee machine. That's heating up the water tank. I'll turn on the kettle. Fans are on. It's working, and you can see there we're pulling nearly 2,000 watts. Kettle's definitely working away, and the coffee machine is heating up the water tank. With power supply being as erratic as it is these days, it's not uncommon to go without power for a week. I'm now beginning to think that this thing could run the home overnight, but we'll get to that later. First, let's try it out in the yard. Okay, so we couldn't kill it with household appliances. That would have been disappointing anyway. Before we move on to the workshop tools, let's just very quickly talk about computers. Um, you can run laptops and stuff off this because it's sine wave, um, so it's not gonna have any of those nasty spikes, so that'll work. All right, let's try circular saws first. First the tiny little one, then we'll go for a big old fashioned one that pulls out a lot of watts. So for these tests, Australian hardwood. Ow. Time we go old school. Oh. 
does both at once too. Okay, so while these results are really good for the EcoFlow, um, it's kind of bad for me because nothing exciting has happened yet. <laughs> I got onto weld class. I said, I want to run your welder off a battery. And they went, no. And then they went, hang on. And then they went, maybe. And then I said, will it hurt the welder? And they said, probably not. I said, will it hurt the battery? And they said, maybe. Let's find out. Now it's really important to point out, Tim Thompson Media does not recommend that you run the 175 MST, which is a professional grade MIG, TIG, ARC welder, off an EcoFlow Delta Max 1600 because for many welding applications the numbers don't add up um, and it's not good practice to run these batteries at full whack because if you do it for an extended period of time you will damage them. However, however, Hold that thought, because weld class may just have something in the pipeline that will work with batteries. Right now, I just want to know if the emergency cutout works. What better way to find out? Now remember, I'm being stupid, so you don't have to. Don't do this at home. Did you say that? The fans have turned on. That's the worst that's happened. I am... <laughs> there you go, right in front of it. And look, still plugged in. There's no... I'm not using cuts here. I'm not using smoke and mirrors. You can run a professional grade welder off that. Now I'm just going to go through the settings on the welder. It's set up for half mil gel packaging strap. So it's on one and a half and B. So it's not on heavy duty settings. And I think that would make a huge difference to this as well, because obviously the, the welder's not drawing as much of a kick with a light setting as it would be with a heavy setting if you're doing tractors. And this is not recommended by weld class. This is not recommended by the battery company. This is just me being stupid, so you don't have to. Well, in for a penny, in for a pound. Let's crank it up. So these are the settings I use for welding gal gate hinges out in the paddock. My petrol powered 9.5 kilowatt generator stalls when I use it to drive this same welder. Let's see if it stalls the battery. Yep. Okay, so I managed to kill it. But all it did was throw the safety. So there you go. You can easily overload it with a big welder if you put it on high settings, but if you're stuck and you're off grid and you've only got to do light stuff, it'll cope. And if you go up too high with the settings, it'll just shut down and be quite safe. I'm in love with this battery. Okay, so next test. This is my bore pump. It's down around 70 or 80 feet. It's a couple of horsepower and it's fed by a 240 volt in just over there at the old well. So we'll plug the EcoFlow in. We'll set the bore pump to run the vineyard for a half hour cycle. And then we'll come back in half an hour, we'll see A, if it could run the vineyard, and B, how much power it sucked. The one thing I have done is I've given him a little hat, um, because batteries don't like getting too hot. So will the EcoFlow run a bore pump? Well, I've got some water here that says yes. Uh, it's running the whole vineyard. Uh, it's pulling about 1650, 1700 watts out of the, out of the unit. The fan's coming on and off sporadically, so that would indicate that it's not being stressed, it's just maintaining temperature. I've set this vineyard to go on for half an hour, so what we're also going to do is go back and see how much juice gets sucked out of the battery after half an hour running a couple of horsepower bore pump to irrigate an entire vineyard.
tough doing research. Okay, half an hour's up. Time to return to normal programming. Let's see how the EcoFlow performed and how much juice is left in the battery. So let's put this in perspective. We've got a two and a half kilowatt, 3000 watt maximum output battery that charges to full in just over an hour. It weighs less than a generator. It's smaller than a generator. We made a coffee with it. We boiled the kettle. We boiled the kettle and made a coffee at the same time. We ran two different size circular saws an angle grinder, a circular saw and an angle grinder together. We welded with it and then we ran a two horsepower bore pump that's 80 feet down for half an hour irrigating a vineyard. And we've still got 70% charge left. <laughs> yes, we managed to blow it with a heavy charge on the welder. Duh, but it got us out of trouble with a light weld and that might be all you need sometimes when you're off grid. Me personally, I love it. I, I reckon it's perfect. One thing left to do is plug it into the house and see if it will run the house's base load overnight because then when the power goes off and you turn off your generator to get to sleep, your fridges will keep running. <laughs>